first? And anybody like come up to you and like, what are you doing? What is this? Uh, that was one guy that I think that that uh, that he he's a killer who came. That was the only. Oh. Scrape your palettes and clean your brushes. It's time for Lucky Time Explosion. Wow! Bo -ba -da -bo -bo -bo. Welcome to the Friday edition, your source for art news, art chatter, interviews with local artists. No Morgan today, but I am joined by Anna Pastor, uh, a painter and dancer, and we're going to get into her story in a little bit. Uh, first, some headlines from our buddies over at Art News. Uh, the Brower Museum is closing. Sad, another closure in the art world. We just had, we lost the University of Philadelphia, or the Art Academy yep. in Philadelphia, which is one of the oldest, maybe the oldest art school in the country. Uh, so that's a bummer. And they're closing amid a controversy about selling a Georgia O'Keeffe painting, trying to fund some of their activities, which was worth around 15 million or so. Uh, and so people were not happy that they were going to be selling this painting to a private bidder and taking it out of the museum system. But you know what? If you want to keep the museums alive, you should probably go get a membership uh, and support them. Absolutely. <laughs> or donate instead of, uh, of manifest against uh, right. pragmatic decisions. I mean, if you yeah. have to keep the light on. You got to keep the lights uh, you, on. You have to, you know, That's uh, true. do what you need to do. And it's... I mean, it's very tiring that everything is like a theoretical yeah. and political. And it's true. There's there's a lot of different camps of it, you know. I try to stay away from the politics stuff on the show because I want to focus on the fun part, the creativity. I want to bring art back to regular people because there's this uh, kind of pervasive idea that art is so fancy and special and hard to understand that, like, you know, the common person is not capable of doing it. And no. I think that's crap. I think the people in the, you know, should, the more they learn about it, the more they'll appreciate it. Uh, and that's why I do my stuff on TikTok. I was just trying to teach the children about abstract expressionism and whatnot. But we got some more headlines here. We also have, uh, this is a fun one. Speaking of mashing up um, fine art and popular culture, are you aware, you know, the Glastonbury Music Festival? No. And it's one of the biggest music festivals uh, over in Europe there, I think, uh, in Glastonbury, obviously. And one of their acts this year is going to be Marina Abramovich, the artist who is most popularly known probably for her project at the Met. Uh, the artist is present where she sat at a table and just kind of sat there and stared at you. Uh, and you looked at her eyes and you just sat there and looked at her and felt her presence, very conceptual. And similarly, her gig at the Glastonbury Festival is going to be about uh, seven minutes of silence, similar to that John Cage piece that is so infamous, you know? Well, I don't want to date myself, but you know, for me, Mariana Avramovich is uh, more known about the China Wall project mm. or... Um, when she and and her partner in town at the time, Ule, uh, that one, Ule, yes, yeah. they were um, they were standing uh, in a door frame, uh, naked, and the visitors in the museum they had to cut through them, right, um, and other performance uh, pieces that were absolutely stunning and beautiful and dangerous. That's funny. Yeah. Then so something for the times. And now now I feel like she's best, best known for um, the Jay-Z video. Oh, I, yeah. I, I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. So Jay-Z Jay -Z did something like during the time of the artist it was present. Uh, I think there's some connection there. But she's going to be at Glastonbury trying to get everybody to shut up for seven minutes. Yeah, I, I imagine that's going to be a tough a tough order. But I'm curious. What I'm happens? curious too. What happens? <laughs> yeah, what's going to happen? Is Are it they... possible today? Is it possible to make a music festival full of like drunk and high people there to rock out? Are they going to shut up for seven minutes? I don't know. We'll see. It's happening like now, I think, or like today. Yeah, wow. yeah I think it's happening either later tonight. Uh, in other news, Anton Van Dalen, uh, an artist who lovingly chronicled New York's East Village, dies at 88. This is by Alex Greenberger at Art News. So if you want to read that whole article, check it out. I had actually never heard of this artist, and uh, which I'm always happy to admit. I feel like a lot of people, uh, and I've met a lot of people, I've been working in the art scene for like 10 years or more, and there's definitely this kind of like, 
you know, <laughs> you don't know that person. Ugh. Ugh, you don't ugh, you no. don't know them. You know, there are so many fantastic, brilliant artists who we don't know. Yeah. Because they don't give a <clears throat> about promotion and yeah. they are just focusing on their art and then you it's just true. you just talk with a couple of friends and, <laughs> and they introduce you and your eyes are wide and uh, wow. Yeah, I think this is actually a common uh, kind of misconception that people have about fine art and how it works, like how the commercial a aspect of it works because we live in this culture of like virality and, and 15 minutes of fame that Andy Warhol predicted and we live in this fast pace like, oh, how many followers do you have is like very closely tied to your net worth uh, right. as a human being. Like not net worth, but like your <laughs> internet worth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I you like know? that. <laughs> it's, it, should be, uh, it should be indexed. <laughs> right, so. yeah, exactly. And I think that's kind of crap and, and the wrong way to think about it, especially just the, the way the system works. Like most of the most successful commercial artists that I know who are making fine art and they're like, making a good living at it. They have like a thousand Instagram followers. They don't go online that much and they let the galleries handle their work and, and talk about them. And, and there's so many out there and you're not going to know all of them. Like, and that's okay. If yeah. you like art, go check it out and don't let yeah. anybody make you feel stupid for not knowing who an artist no, is. No, just enjoy art. No. Yeah. I told a story, I think, on a couple episodes about this uh, gallerist who came in and was like super incensed because we called the show the same thing. Like the oh. name of the show was the name of one of his artists, like a uh. name. And I had never heard of him, but he like the insinuation was just like, I should have. Wow. And I actually <laughs> maybe had did in passing, but... You know, there's so much going on there and the history and is so interesting when you find an artist and you start checking them out, you know, the more you learn about them, the more you can put your work in context and the more interesting and cool it becomes. So don't make anyone like feel dumb about it. Just go no, read about and it. And the word is big. It's, it's good it to understand. That's that. very true. That's very we are true. small. <laughs> yes, totally. I feel that every day, like more and more now, you know, like looking at everybody and all the patterns and. Uh, it gets heavy. Well, anyway, let's move yeah. on to another yes. headline. We've got um, uh, Supreme Court rules against civil liability protections in the Sackler family. So the U.S. Supreme Court ruled on Thursday that the Sackler family could not be legally protected in actions related to the opioid crisis. I'm so happy. Yeah. So the decision was related to a provision in settlement involving Purdue Pharma, Sackler's pharmaceutical company, which produces OxyContin, the painkiller uh, with addictive properties. The four to five decision written by Justice Neil Grouch states that the federal bankruptcy code will not allow for uh, third party liability shields in bankruptcy agreements. Uh, so this has been going on for a while. Of course, this is interesting to artists and art people because the Sacklers and their donations to the art world and museums and whatnot. This is from Daniel Cassidy, by the way. Those words I was just reading from Artnet News. And let's see. Lastly, is there anything else interesting going on in here? Oh, here's a funny. Yep. Here we go. Talking about um, regular world pop culture meeting the fine art world. We have the original Harry Potter cover smashes auction record selling for $1.9 million. The original drawing from the Harry Potter cover, hmm. which is kind of cool. You know, that's the original illustration. It was a giant phenomenon. Well, I was never into Harry when Potter. When was it? When was it? Uh, when did it? Uh, Harry I mean, Potter came out like early 2000s, way before so, I moved to New York. So it's uh, 25 oh, years and almost 2 million. In, uh, yeah. It, it's it's a substantial yeah, growth. De <laughs> definitely, definitely. I remember Harry Potter came out. I, I don't actually know when it came out, but let's look that up real quick. Jamie, pull this up. We don't have a producer here yet. We're doing it all ourselves, <laughs> so we got to check it out. I, but I remember uh, Harry Potter when I was still in court. I was still in San Diego, and I was riding like a bus around. I was watching a Navy guy reading Harry Potter, and I was like, why is this guy in the Navy reading a children's book? And then uh, it just took off. I, I remember the lines yeah. for the new Harry Potter book <laughs> in, in New York. So it must have been early 2000 because right. uh, um, I was here in New York. You were here when I, when I when I When I bumped into a huge line. 2001. And, wow. That no, was a while ago. 2001. In November came, 16th, 2001 is but when Harry the Potter speaks. When, when, when came out the last? Oh, I don't know. Because I came in 2003. And uh, then I remember uh, the, the Harry Potter uh, craze when people, <laughs> people dressed up 
and uh, you just uh, saw the characters <laughs> yeah. wherever you went, wherever you went in the subway, on the street, in the grocery shop. It was like <laughs> completely right. surreal. Yeah, it is a very strange thing too, and I think an interesting case study in the idea of separating the artist from the art because of how controversial J.K. Rowling became later on, oh. uh, and and the it, it couldn't be stopped. It couldn't be stopped. Like people Please. are still playing Quidditch or whatever. Please, <laughs> please, no, I can't. I can't. I just can't take. This. I know, right? You can't but take it. No, you can't take. She's she she is brilliant. I she mean, wrote a book. You know, but yeah, she's, she did this thing that a lot of young adult authors do, I think, which is recycling themes. Right. from you know classic literature uh, and waving it into the story uh, these are archetypes yeah so, archetypes. you know you can find that uh, in in folk tales in variations right variations right. but uh, but uh, but she arranged in a very original way and you know she was an unemployed uh, single mom when she oh, started yeah she was totally broke <laughs> yeah that seems to be a recurring theme with artists <laughs> so you and know. i think i know why which is that you know it takes a lot of effort to uh, and focus to do artwork and there's only one person it's really for when you start it it's for you uh unless you're out there working it but that's the other thing too i feel like you can't really make that too many generalizations about art because of the nature of it being so personal that there's a, such a big, uh, a wide range of art forms and art reasons for art to exist. Mm. And it's one of those words that's just like really hard to define. Like what is art, what is not art? Yeah, particularly today, right? Because we, we live in a world that is uh, completely mysticized. There, there are no uh, defined boundaries mm. and... Uh, and that makes it interesting also because then you find incredibly original uh, <clears throat> combinations of themes and techniques. And right. <coughs> oh, bless you. No, no worries. <coughs> I like to say I think that what's happening right now is that like reality is fracturing and that we have uh, we have like more. I think there's less consensus about how the world is or what's going on. Cause you can find different viewpoints on almost any issue that are so radically different that I feel like people are living in their own little worlds where one thing is true or another and, or things are important or not. And there's a lot less, uh, which is natural. I guess that makes sense with the internet, you know, kind of blowing everything open and giving you more personal power. I was thinking a lot today because uh, we just filmed a video for Sola Studio. Shout out again. A great sponsor. Amazing place. Come here for your prints and yes. your business cards. But we did a little video with um, an artist I love, Richard L Lorenzi. Hmm. Have you met Richard? No. So Richard Lorenzi is a sculptor who used to be like an 829 union member, of the Scene Painters Union. Hmm. And he uh, came to do a little video trying to promote joining the union to younger people. Uh, and, you know, he was talking about, uh, you know, his pension and about, you know, creatives and union and all, and all this stuff and, you know, how he's grateful to the union for having this pension to retire on. Mm -hmm. And I just thought to my head and I thought in my head, like, we're going from pensions to Patreon. Speaking of which, check out our Patreon and join <laughs> another little plug. But yeah, so that's the art news. Some interesting conversation already. Thank you for joining us today, Anna. Oh, sure. Uh, tell us a little it's bit about pleasure. your story and your journey here and your time in New York and, you know, what, what's up? Oh, what's up? What's up? What's up? Um, I'm a crab, so <laughs> I'm, I'm moving backward. <laughs> uh, so a crab? A cancer. My, oh, okay. My sign I got is you. cancer. It's my sign now. I thought it's you meant like a sign. literal crab. We're all devolving into crab. No, I'm, I'm moving theory. backwards. So, yeah. so I'm I'm painting now, and I'm very happy. Uh, I'm doing this also um, because I'm a little bit pushed to do that because uh, my background is dance and theater, and mm. I uh, I'm longing to go back uh, to do more performative and mixed the performative art with visual art and doing uh, uh, more multimedia. 
I remember your bathtub piece when oh, you were yeah. performing in the bathtub. <laughs> yeah. Where were you? Yeah. You were like Union Square? Oh, uh, yeah. It was Astor Place. It Astor was Place. Astor Place. And, uh, you know, that was my... Um, I, Here's I, a picture for you, by the way. Uh, yeah, tell us about that a little bit. What was the experience like of being in a bathtub and doing performance art in Astor Place? Oh, I love that because, you know, I haven't uh, performed with, in front of an audience uh, mm. n for 19 years before that piece. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, because uh, I, I came to New York with a grant for my artistic achievement as a contemporary choreographer. Oh. Uh, and it was for artistic research. Uh, and I studied movement analysis at the Laban Bartner Movement Institute. And then, uh, you know, I just didn't feel uh, the art, the dance scene, that mm. it was coincided. I, because I was very visual in my work, I was very theatrical. Uh, mm. I was always like uh, uh, in the, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the boundaries of theater, movement, and and visual. Because as I was using videos. I just didn't know how to do it, so I had to <laughs> beg uh, uh, to edit. I, I recorded many of my videos, but oh, I, cool. I didn't know how to edit. And so... Uh, so I just abandoned, I learned editing and I transformed into a video, a multimedia artist, a videographer. And, and then when I, uh, I didn't have a proper camera and computer and blah, blah, blah to do the video stuff, I started to paint. Yeah. So, it's like, like, so you went from dancing to video yeah. to painting, but yeah, you, might, you, you might still be uh, doing video if you had a better computer. Uh, I actually, I wouldn't <laughs> have uh, left the video production mm. if my camera and my my computer would have not died out of, you know. Right. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, I really feel that for me, art making is yeah. is like running and changing horses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? Uh, I like that. Because, uh, because I don't, I, I have a need to express something that I sense mm. uh, from the word and I want to share yeah. the sensation. Mm. Um Dance is, is not a verbal, uh, it's a very abstract form. And, uh, and in painting, my, my uh, form is abstract painting, yeah. obviously. Yeah, I was going to say, your paintings are abstract as well. Yeah, because it has a close relationship with movement. And that's dance. very true, yeah. And um, so, so that's how I feel uh, that I have to find a way to put that out. Mm. from the inside and so whatever tool I have access to at the moment I yeah. use it so there is an opportunistic way to see that which I'm not ashamed of yeah no. but so so that um that was a transmedia project it's called golden age right and uh because uh, did you get any I, weird stares? Did anybody like come up to you and like, "What are you doing? What is this?" But that was one guy that I think that that, uh, that he he's a killer who came. That was the only. Oh, a that killer? was the no. That I felt that the guy. So you know, he just uh, got gave you like, like serial killer vibes. Uh, uh, no, creeping like around? yeah, he, you know, I had a, a whistle. I yeah. had a whistle with me in that bus stop uh -huh. under, right? Was that part and of the then, installation or no, was it just was the for emergencies? No, that was emergency use, oh. you know, because... Uh, That's New York, baby. You got to get like a taser or a knife or something. <laughs> <laughs> the whistle ain't going to do it. <laughs> no, that was, a, that was a security guard. Oh, that's good. So, you know, the whistle was to, to alert, alert the, the guy. Because what I did, I created this bus stop. This was not a bus stop, but it was two chairs and it was wrapped with a golden fabric uh -huh. and um, it was very low level you yeah. know so uh, you know as a performer um you you understand your positioning right uh, in relation to the audience and i was lower level right. than so i put myself in an extremely vulnerable position was that kind of the point of the piece or was that just um, a, a happenstance it was it, it was to invite people to interact because right. if if i'm towering if i'm you know right. uh, it's much less inviting but True. if i'm if i'm in a at a lower level it's much much less threatening yeah uh, and so people came and that was my objective to have people to come to talk with me did you find an, uh, a lot of people did or yeah, most people yeah. were in their zone no uh, well 
uh, Astor Place, you know, is, 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 is very busy. Yeah. And I put myself in front of the exit of the subway. <laughs> so people came and, oh, oh. and uh, right. so obviously many went to their life, but uh, there were still enough people left. Right. That he, they came and they, they, they had a little chat because this was a transmedia project. Right. Uh, it so, had more to do than just the, the yeah. being there in the tub. You had yeah. a website. Linked yeah, up to I had. It. Yes, and the the QR code of the website was behind me, and I I wanted to uh, tell people to please go to the website. The website right. had a questionnaire about uh, current events. I think probably the only good thing to come out of the pandemic was the final, final, finally the adoption of QR. QR codes like people because you had to use them to order your freaking food at the restaurant and you'd you know and then people started to actually use them and understand them and I was like this is awesome because it'd been so long coming they didn't yeah. no one wanted to use them because advertisers weren't getting any money out of them they were free yeah it was well it was you know actually before the pandemic because even in 2019 and right. we were planning to do it and develop a little bit more but then i couldn't do that because hmm. of the pandemic because i, I was terrified what happens myself. when they scan the code uh, behind uh, your bathtub so they went to the website right and they they, they got the questionnaire mm. and it was an interactive questionnaire right. so it immediately showed them if their response uh, was uh, correct or incorrect uh, uh, i selected like 30 questions from the how many people filled it out i'm curious in total, you know, do you remember? I don't, I don't remember. Also, because I'm technically challenged. Like, you mean a luddite? I you're a little, you're a bit of a luddite. Was that uh, luddites are like somebody who doesn't like technology or like can't use? Computers. Yeah, I was pretty much technophobe. I, technophobe. I, when I came to New York, but then I had to lose it, right? Because I, I had to learn video editing. I understood right. that I, I could not beg anymore to people. I got a grant. Uh, the first time mm -hmm. uh, from Outpost Artist Resources, wonderful organization. Outpost Artist Resources. Uh, yes, they are in Ridgewood now. I think there's now. a lot of artists listening now, so maybe check that out. They are in Ridgewood. If you are experimental artist, musicians, or uh, media. What if you they, paint like horses and ships uh, and watercolors? Do they not want to well, fuck with I, you? No, <laughs> they are more. They are more. Uh, as, as far as I understood, they also have a radio and they. All uh, they they are more into performative, mm, okay. uh, and they had so they um, gave me a residency grant that meant that they paid an editor. Oh, cool. To edit because at the time I couldn't edit. Right. Uh, I mean I didn't know how to edit. Uh, so they uh, they edited the footage, the video, the video editor for Golden Age project. Uh, for, no, not for it was oh, okay. it was way before. It was in two thousand and seven. Yeah. Um, so 12 years <laughs> prior. Yeah. Yeah. Man, time is going faster and faster. It is pretty crazy. I was talking on a podcast a while ago and they were like, um, uh, when did this happen? I was like, pretty recently, I think. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> I was like, oh, fudge. Time flies. <laughs> it really does. So make the most of it and make a lot of art. Actually, doing yeah. this podcast has been helping me with my time uh, like perception because uh -huh. we do it so often. I know we miss a few here and there. We're humans. We got to take a break sometimes. But doing it three times a week is like... Ooh, you do it three times? Yeah, I didn't Monday, even Wednesday, know that. Friday is Ooh. the goal. And we were up to like 53 episodes. It's going to be a 54, I think. Wow. Uh, and just doing that much in nine months has really made me feel like uh, that nine months has been a lot longer than it actually has been. If I, if I was not doing this, I would have felt like it was yesterday. But I want to talk to you more about your transition from movement and dancing into abstract painting, because that's my wheelhouse. I mm. love I love painting abstractly and I love looking at it and I like expressionist work and all this. I love all the stuff that uh, that people look at when they think this isn't art. You know, and they're like, this is crap. I could do that. Uh, I could just splatter a paint well, on the thing. That's the stuff I like. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not so, you know, I don't, I have to be humbled here because I, I don't have a, a studio art training. I don't, I'm totally self-taught. And, um, that's like a bragging point these days. It's not even, no, not even humble. No, Be no. like, I'm self-taught. I'm, not, I'm, you know, it's, no, it's that's just, how I feel. no, I, I mean, uh, it just, uh, so I did my first painting, uh, in 2017 yeah. and that was very terrible. <laughs> I, I, 
I actually, I caught that. <laughs> <It's laughs> <It's terrible. terrible. laughs> I love that you can admit Literally. that. That's good. Uh, uh, it was, you know, it was just um, uh, someone who have no clue idea yeah. about painting yeah. and uh, mixed media. It was just terrible, uh, <laughs> but it was large. And, um, it and, is big. and well, they say, you know, and this is a tip for all you artists listening. If you make bad art, just make it big. Yeah, that's true. Make but it really big. And then it has a sense of importance. And yeah. People will buy yeah. It. Yeah. But you know, it just didn't dry in time because <laughs> it was too big. So anyway, um, uh, and it was, uh, very conceptual. Yeah. Uh, like I was using, uh, books, uh, uh that, were important uh, at the time. I burying it underneath on it. And, and burying underneath. And then it, it totally lost its meaning because yeah. nobody can see what the right. heck is that. It, it, turns into, the, it turns into one of those things where you need to read the museum plaque. It's, you, know? you know, because because here's the thing. In theater, yeah. uh, when, you, when you build a character, you have the sub, sub text, you know? Yeah. And so uh, since uh, my training is theater, so right. I was creating subtext, yes. but that was totally useless and idiotic. <laughs> and uh, so, so I, I took a little break and, um, of painting. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, the pandemic came yep. and I got connected to an internet, uh, to a group, uh, uh, mainly musicians. Hmm. Uh, it's called Now Net Arts. No uh, net arts? No, no. Now. Like, yeah. like no. Like I mean, like now. Uh, right now. Now net, net arts. arts. Oh. Uh, and um, the, <clears throat> the head of this is Sarah Weaver, okay. who has been developing her research about telematic art, meaning... Uh, telematic? Doing telematic, doing uh, over the internet. Oh, that sounds like, cool. Like uh, even 20 years before... 20 years, yeah. uh, she was doing uh, performances with people in different parts of the world mm. way before. They call it a net art, I think, is the one yes. I'm familiar with. It just yes. calling it net art. Yes, but and no. That no. is a rabbit hole, too. Uh, yeah, you but, but you know, she started it way before it became in. It was yeah. way before the pandemic. Like the 90s? Uh, early tw 90s. about 20 years. Yeah. So, so, I think art's know, been early, made in early, early 2000. Okay. Yeah. And that's what I think. And, uh, you know, then it suddenly became relevant because of right. the pandemic. And so, mm. uh, so we were doing weekly presentations and, uh, and so mainly, mainly were musicians and she's a composer. And that helped you get more into and, painting again? And I, yeah, and I started to do live painting with them oh. and videos and the music was, it was just so beautiful. And so it was very inspiring. Yeah, and, you're, and I can so, see that. You're, some of your abstract paintings are kind of musical. It's, mus it's all music. It, so that like was my, you know, that was my inspiration, the right. music and the movement. Right. And then it stayed. That's what you hear. I hear that a lot. You know, I, I, it makes me think of also, have you seen that guy who went kind of viral here? I'm going to play this clip while we talk about it. Okay. I have to do this so I know where to edit it. Yes. In. Uh, there was this dude who was a long jumper and uh like a you know olympic long oh, jumper and yeah. he goes into a museum and it's one of those things that i love that like people will look at and and poo poo they'll comment like this is stupid this isn't fucking art this is terrible but what he does is takes like a piece of charcoal and then he puts like a trampoline thing there and he like runs along the wall and like does his long jump and like oh, drags the, oh. the cram behind him so oh, you can see like a mark you know, like the, the movement mark over and over and over again and that's, I like that kind of stuff a little bit, but well, um, I, I actually, uh, it's the imprint of the movement. And, right. You know, it's the shadow uh, of the movement. It's the, well, you know, they call the dance, line. the dance is, is basically, uh, uh drawing in the space and, uh, right. the really good dancers, like, um, uh, my first master, yeah. um, uh, I, uh, I met her when she was in her eighties and wow. she couldn't teach. Uh, she wasn't, it was she wasn't boogieing down anymore it was, in the it 80s? Was, no, 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 no. It yeah. was forbidden for 40 years. 
Moder- what was moder- modern, modern dance in Hungary. What? During, yeah, yeah. Geez, we really take yes. stuff for granted over here. So in the States, anyway, huh? so, so modern. Wait, that, I need to know more about that. Modern dance was banned in Hungary yes, for forty years. Yes, because the ballet was the the ballet. The ballet. The was, ballet was the, 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 the accepted. So anyway, she was playing at the piano and telling yeah. us what to do, and we couldn't. Yikes. And then she got uh, upset, and oh, she wow. said she stood up yeah. and made the movement, and you didn't see the old lady you oh, saw the lines fascinating it was beautiful we're going to continue our conversation if you're watching on youtube or listening on spotify uh this is going to be the end of the free show check us out on patreon for extended audio versions so we're going to keep chatting and if you want to see the rest of this join us over on patreon but thank you so much for coming here watching our video i hope you liked it if you did please press a uh, like subscribe maybe i don't know maybe <laughs> uh and we'll see y'all next time Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this free version of Lucky Time Explosion. For the full hour-long podcast, please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash luckytimeexplosion. 